Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to this May 2023 energy update video. My name is Ona Christie. I'm a visionary artist and energy worker. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing insights into the energies of May 2023, including this um, soul oracle painting that I did around those energies and um, a beautiful message that came through um, to assist us in this time. We'll also be looking at some of the astrology of May 2023. Okay, so um, let's start with the image here. When I was tuning into the energies of May, um, often I will get the message right away, right? In the words, this time it just, nothing was coming. So I asked for an image and they gave me this, let's see if you can see him, um, this funny little <laughs> Buddha face. So it was only when I had the um, the image that the message started to come through. And I'm going to read that to you in a little bit. But um, I, I want to tell a little bit about the process of this, because this is a process that you can use too, whether you're using painting or any of the other, other of the arts, because the uh, process of creative work is so linked to it's kind of pretty much the same thing as your intuition. All right, so um, from that sketch, I really felt like I wanted to do a full painting because when that happens, then more information comes through. And uh, so I, I started painting the Buddha and as I was painting, more images started coming forward. Um, I saw up here, I saw a peacock really, really kind of, I felt that energy of peacock, right? And um, so that's why we have the peacock feathers um, way up at the top. And uh, there, you can see them much better in person. They're, they're a little subtle here in the screen. And then we've got the fish that showed up as well. And that's the fun thing about this is sort of like, um, sort of like an Oracle card or the reading comes through the intuition, the higher self, of course, knows what all this stuff means. You know, I don't always. So once the image started coming through, I was like, oh my gosh, looking up all these things, I realized, well, it's a white Buddha, right? And that has a meaning. So does the fish in, in, um, in Buddhist symbolism. So I have to admit, I, I am not very, uh, I, I've never really learned a whole lot about Buddhism. So it was really interesting for me to um, learn some of this stuff. Okay, so this is what I learned about the symbolism of this painting. Um, the color white in Buddhism. And if you are a Buddhist or if you have better insight into this, I'd love if you'd leave a comment because I'm not trying to be, um, I'm not trying to be the expert here. I'm very much uh, learning uh, this stuff uh, through the art and the intuitive work. Okay, um, but what I, I was able to pick up when I did research is that uh, the white in Buddhist symbolism symbolizes purity, knowledge, longevity, and emancipation or freedom, okay? So white is associated with the supreme or primordial Buddha called Varukana, who is regarded by some Buddhists as the universal Buddha from which all of the Buddhas originate and some, of, some, some see him as the personification of wisdom. Okay, and his element is water. So when, when I uh, first saw this sketch, I could see this kind of horizon and I saw this as being water. And then there, right at his forehead or third eye, there's the sun image um, that showed up, but a lot of water um, that came through with this Buddha. And um, so there's like no surprise that the fish would be showing up in the water. And uh, here's what I learned about fish. It, it, again, this is the Buddhist perspective or Buddhist uh, symbolism here um, that they, they symbolize, again, freedom, abundance, good fortune, but especially fearlessness. And the idea is that if you are following your dharma, right, or your, your higher self, um, you don't need to fear drowning in an ocean of suffering. And I think that's a super important point right now, right? Because for many of us, um, the, the uh, you know, the, the journey of awakening often is 
sparked by suffering, right? Um, and, and that's true, it has always been true of many people, but the fish symbolizes a different way of going about it. And it's, it's through learning and through um, spiritual instruction is, is what I'm getting is that when you when you follow the receive the spiritual instruction and and start to follow your um, your true soul path uh, but you know with the the wisdom right that comes in um, through spiritual teachings that it frees you from the need to go through lots of sufferings, right? So it's like, basically, we've got the choice of, um, you know, you know, reinventing the wheel very painfully, or following, you know, the spiritual instruction that comes through the wisdom traditions. Um, and it's important to note that a lot of the wisdom traditions, um, some of them have been a compromised. So the more we can learn about multiple traditions, or if you choose to follow just one, which can be a really amazing thing to do, that's really probably um, a, a, the best thing to do, like choose one that really calls to you, but then also open yourself to learning um, other traditions and, and the teachings um, here and there, because you're going to find in the intersection of those, you're going to start to find the truth. And also keep observing nature, because nature will also reflect the truth back to you. Okay, um, the symbol of the peacock, um, again, Buddhist symbolism, it represents purity. Um, very similar to the white Buddha, right? So again, not surprising that the peacock would be showing up. Um, so why do they symbolize purity? Because they have been seen to eat certain plants that are poisonous to humans, as well as venomous snakes. So they symbolize how a mind that has been purified through spiritual teachings can transmute toxic energy into health and beauty, right? Um, so, so a lot of this is about this process of enlightenment and going through the dark and transmuting it, right? And, and realizing truth. And um, so one last symbol is this beautiful symbol here. And I've never actually seen it before, but when uh, the painting was almost done and there was this kind of open space there and I, I, I just felt like it needed something. Um, a lot of these paintings that I do end up being a hand mudra showing up, but uh, in speaking with dialoguing with the painting, it was like, no, it's not, it doesn't need to be a hand mudra. It just was calling for a symbol, right? So I went and it was like, okay, well, this is, it struck me as a Thai Buddha or one from Southeast Asia because of the shape of the head. And so I was looking at Thai Buddhist symbols and this one just popped up right away. And I looked at it as like, that's it, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Um, so then I, I started reading about what it meant and it really fits. It's the symbol showing the spiritual journey towards enlightenment. And so what my understanding of it is, is this, it starts here with a spiral. And to me, it looks like, okay, well, this is like before you start to really awaken, um, your life kind of goes around and around circles and it could be like multiple lifetimes. And then once you reach a certain point of awakening, you, uh, you kind of get buffeted back and forth, right? <laughs> you go into that fourth dimensional space and it's like, whoa. <laughs> and then at, at some point, once you've had enough of that, things just start to straighten out. You start really treading this straight and narrow path. And it's like you start to learn, but um, you 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 find your truth, and that's where it straightens out. And then you, it'll have some some of them have a lotus up here, or these or, or, or dots, and it'll be sort of like I think it represents kind of attaining your goals <laughs> or attaining what you're what you're seeking. Let me give you the message first and then we'll look at the astrology. Okay, so when I tune in the, the message here, um, I'll read it to you word for word. Okay, his message is in the innermost sanctum is a peace that you may retreat to at any time. Indeed, one may dwell in this place simultaneously with walking in the world. There is no need to separate oneself from day-to-day -day existence. Rather, 
one can make of one's life a meditation. Even as you go about your day, your inner contemplation may take precedence in your heart. Seek the stillness within. Your sense of connection need not be confined to the meditation chamber alone. Allow your inner awareness to always be in meditation. In this way, you yourself become a portal for transcendence in the world. Okay, so basically he's talking about you can work towards a state where we're in this meditative state, even when we're in the world. And I feel like that's that's what we're all working towards, right? Is bringing spirit down into the world. Okay, so, um, and by the way, I, I kind of showed this to my dad and read that, and he's been really steeped in Christian mysticism. And he's like, oh, he says, that's St. Paul's, first letter to the Thessalonians, he said, chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, he said there were especially three um, instructions um, that Paul gives, and no matter what you think of Paul, I think these are beautiful. It's live joyfully, pray without ceasing, and be always grateful. And what my dad said, and he just went through this heart attack where he had this experience where he was in a lot of pain and he was able to call 911 and and so he was able to kind of be the observer and watch these um, uh, emergency medical technicians working on him but he said he was in this state of almost bliss right because he'd been working with these these um, kind of commandments right to live joyfully pray without ceasing be always grateful and he said that after a while it sinks in and he was able to go through this experience in a really transcendent way. So I really wanted to share that because I feel like, you know, sometimes we go into this, you know, we do our spiritual practice and it's not always easy. It's hard work, um, but it, it does sink into one's being. It permeates one's soul after a while, after we keep working um, on ourselves. So, all right, so let's look at the astrology of May and um, you'll see where some of the parallels are to what the message came through, okay? Um, May is a month of retrogrades. We were already in Mercury retrograde. It will be, Mercury will remain in retrograde through mid-May. And then Pluto just entered Aquarius on 3-23-2023, um, really significant date and um, Pluto in Aquarius is going to go retrograde on May 1st. Okay, so that will kind of strengthen some of these Plutonian energies. Pluto is the lord of the underworld and rules death, rebirth, and transformation. Um, interestingly, the last time it moved into Aquarius was in the late 18th century, which was a period of intense revolution on multiple levels so it's it's going into retrograde now um in aquarius and it's going to stay in retrograde um until october in june it's going to go into capricorn so it's going to kind of go back and then finally move back into aquarius um going direct in October, but moving into Aquarius on January 22nd of next year, 2024. All right. So I'll, I'll touch back on what I think that means. Um, but just with these retrogrades, it feels like the first couple of weeks in May may be really perfect for deep introspection. And so it's going to bring up big opportunity to do shadow work. And especially because we've got another eclipse coming up on May 5th. And if you watched my last video on the, the solar eclipse in April, that also was an invitation for deep shadow work, right? So we've got Pluto, we've got Mercury in retrograde, which often is a, an invitation to just kind of go within. And then we've got this eclipse season that we're in. Um, I feel like Pluto going into retrograde right now, it, it, it's a little bit more in the calm month of Taurus. Um, it, it's inviting us to take some of the energies of April even deeper and, and bring them into contemplation, really sit with whatever those energies 
are there in a really compassionate way. Okay, so this May 5th lunar eclipse in Scorpio, it's Scorpio full moon, right? It's also connected with death and with exploring what lies underneath, right? Including the human subconscious. And um, that's connected with this, this solar eclipse that just happened. This is a pair with it. And it's interesting that this solar, this lunar eclipse is happening on 5-5, five, five, which is this numerological number of change and transformation. Okay, so what one thing that keeps coming up for me here is, um, I, I guess, the feeling that I'm getting about this um, month of May is that it is kind of a last chance preparation for us to really go within right now and prepare us for this next big cycle, um, getting a lot of energy around 2024. And I'm seeing this right now, this month, especially the first two weeks as a time when we're being energetically prepared for the events of the next couple of years, 2024 and beyond. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's one thing that is really coming up for me really strongly as we move further into this these energies is every time I turn around, it seems like somebody is talking about being honest with oneself, right? Um, so the deep, deep practice of personal honesty, being true to your own self, of really looking within and asking for honesty on all levels, coming up really strong right now. And part of that is being as objective with yourself as possible. And for instance, I'm looking at my desk right now, and it's truthfully, it's kind of cluttered, right? And I know that you, I'm sure, are aware that every object has its own energy, right? I've got one of my decks sitting here, I've got some crystals, just all sorts of things, <laughs> um, some, you know, electronic gadgets, and everything, of the, the, the single one of these has energy, and when it's all kind of jumbled together, what it's doing is it's it's kind of throwing my energy off, right? And I have to look at this and just be honest with myself. It's like, okay, well, you know, if I'm feeling a little bit more on anxious, that, that that's part of why. So it's this little, honestly, of looking at, okay, if it's your surroundings or your behavior, how you're dealing with, your, with the world, I'm looking at this, I'm like, I have some cleaning up to do, probably on more than one level, but the physical environment is showing me, right? Um, so getting real and getting humble with ourselves to recognize that, yeah, there's work to do, but doing it in a way that's compassionate, where we're not beating up on ourselves, but using that awareness, right, to better ourselves or to further ourselves along on the path that we're on, okay, that's eating the venom, right, that's calling in that peacock energy, that's that purification, in a way that's constructive and you know turning that venom into something positive. So Buddha or any of the ascended masters that you connect with um, can help us to do that work with compassion for ourselves and for others as well. And that's the fish, right? Moving into the fearlessness, right? Where we can look at deep into the shadows, deep into the darkness, and do so with compassion so that we can correct whatever needs to be corrected without falling off into anxiety or fear or shame or guilt or whatever it is, okay? So that is what leads to spiritual emancipation and freedom. And that is one potential that I think is really there for some of you listening to this. You're conquering fear and you're ready to really move into your truth, move into your dharma in a big way, right? Living your truth. You may find yourself, especially through practices like this, if you're able to go within a little bit more this month, may start to find yourself feeling really blissful and joyful, regardless of what's going on in the world around you, right? Because you're forging that connection with source, you're starting to merge with the inner Christ, the inner Buddha, the, the Atman, the energies of this month are going to really support this process if you work with them. So beautiful month, okay? 
others, or maybe you may experience this too. You may feel deep emotions coming up that may not feel that good, but this is, you know, the energies right now are really encouraging to bring those emotions up, look at them truthfully, acknowledge them for what they are, right? It's these, these emotions, rather than pushing them down or denying them or calling them something else, just call them out. And, you know, sometimes we need to acknowledge and see what's going on, need to allow the emotions to flow, need to acknowledge the grief or the pain or the suffering or, or whatever it is, um, and check in with them. Check in if you feel triggered, right? There's a lot of triggering things right now. Check in. And maybe somebody said something that's, or something is going on in the social media, on the news, whatever it is, pay attention to how it feels, right? And especially to pay attention to if you have emotional, uh, emotionally charged reactions that come out as beliefs or what you are feeling like uh, truths that may be spoken. Um, if you're finding yourself speaking in a very reactive way, even if it feels like truth for you, really look at it, okay? Look at it, feel, feel the energy of it because anything can be boiled down to, is it a vibration of fear around that emotion or is it a vibration of love? And if you're kind of triggered into speaking something that, that may feel like truth in the moment, take a good look, step back, breathe, bring it into meditation and feel, is it really truth? Or is there this huge vibration of fear or anxiety or shame or something around it that's you know, momentary shame can be good because, you know, you can look at something like my cluttered desk or maybe some behavior that really is kind of shameful. <laughs> and, and when we feel that momentary shame, it's a, it's a trigger for us to be like, oh, I need to look at that. But when we're steeped in it, right, when we spend a lot of time or when it's just like not the sticky, that stickiness and doesn't want to let go or and where we start to have beliefs that are really based in that shame that 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 feels bad right it's a vibration of something that's not just in the moment but where we've identified with it that's what you want to watch out for fear especially okay so, or is it a vibration that's based in love right so that momentary shame is actually based in love right we can say you know i'm feeling shame because i really uh, I, I want better for myself. I want to bring myself up out of that behavior. I can do better. I have set higher standards for myself. I love myself enough to call myself out. Okay. Um, so that would be an example of shame that is a vibration of love versus shame that's a vibration of fear or, you know, something lower is like, oh, I'm a, I'm a horrible person. And, and you know, that's why my desk <laughs> looks like this. And I, I just, you know, it makes me realize just how crappy I am. <laughs> really different, right? So just something to be really aware of. To assist in getting this message out, if you feel like it's been helpful for you, um, you can like the video, you can comment. I would love to hear your comments, especially if you have thoughts about these symbolisms or, or deeper um, uh, insights. That's great. I'm putting this uh, white Buddha on my website for sale. This is the original. There's always one person that a painting is meant for. So if you're feeling that's you, check it out. Um, I also have prints uh, for sale as well. I'll be writing all this up in a blog probably next week. So if you're more of a reader, just subscribe and, and watch for my post about that. And remember, you were born to be free.